Hi, my name is Paul Fisher and I've been painting watercolour now for the last 12 or 13 years, perhaps the last two or three years more seriously. Uh, this um, YouTube video is part of a series that I've done um, which basically explains some of the um, techniques that I've learned in the last couple of years which I found very useful and very enjoyable which I'm sure other budding artists would also um, like to have a go at. The other uh, videos include uh, how to stretch watercolour paper quickly um, and also the water spray method used for um, some fun fluffy puffins and cows and so forth. This video is going to be about painting a couple of very colourful uh, flamingos um, and we'll introduce the use of masking fluid, uh, some very basic uh, washers, maybe a bit of splatter um, and also maybe a bit of water spray as well. Um, and this will be to produce a very quick painting and show you how you can produce something that's vibrant, colourful, fun, uh, in a very short space of time. Um, you can see more of uh, my videos on my YouTube channel um, and you can see more of my artwork on my website which is paulfisherart.com um, I'm also presently chairman of the Laycock Art Group which is a very vibrant um, group of uh, uh, artists who meet every week in Laycock, the village of Laycock uh, in Wiltshire, UK. Um, and if you go to um, laycockartgroup.co.uk you'll see there not only my own gallery but the gallery of other members too. Um, do have a look through that. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video, I hope you get something out of it and I hope at the end of the day it will inspire you to um, do something simple and quick and easy for yourself which um, will put a smile on your face. Thanks. Okay, uh, you can see I've already got the two flamingos uh, drawn. I've also coated the main bodies of the flamingos in masking fluid. I'll explain a bit more about that uh, in a moment. First of all though I just want to talk a bit about the equipment that I use or I'm going to use in this de demonstration. Um, I'm using Archer's or Arsh 300 gram uh, rough paper. It's a lovely lovely paper. I have thoroughly enjoy it. It's not the cheapest paper obviously um, but uh, it's a paper that will slowly absorb water, slowly absorb the colour it tends to give you, therefore, more time to work in feeding the paper with uh, colour and more tone. Um, if you want um, a quick dry brush technique where you just um, drag the brush across, it's very easy to get a, a lovely speckled effect uh, with this paper. Um, so I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, as you see, I've got it um, stretched onto a board. It's a little bit bowed, actually, because. <laughs> Uh, the board is not really thick enough. Um, if you want to see how I stretch uh, paper very, very quickly um, so that you're ready to work within five or ten minutes, then uh, you can go and see one of my other um, YouTube videos specifically for that. Um, the masking fluid that I've used is um, the Winsor Newton type. I'm not a fan, I have to say, of masking fluid. I don't enjoy using it. If you do use it, and here we're going to use it because we're going to paint the background, the water, um, first. And we want, because the background is going to be um, a blue colour, it's going to be quite a, a light toned blue. We don't want that blue to go across the, the bodies of the birds um, as such. Because if you do that and then you try and paint the vibrant colours on top, the blue has a tendency to make the, the colours you put on top um, look um, pale or dirty uh, or subdued. You've got to be careful with blues. Um, so often I see them being uh, used for skies and so for obviously or water at water and um, I find that um, a lot of artists when they use them tend to overuse the blues and cut out any light that they might have been able to capture on their paintings. Um, so in this case I want to retain the white of the, the bodies of the birds and therefore really the only way to do that is with uh, masking fluid. And you can see I've already put that on. Um, I have to say that uh, as I was putting it on um, the, the cap sort of fell off in a rather indiscreet way and so I got it all over my clothes. Uh, do be aware of, of that. Um, 
use it carefully, get the cap on as quickly as you can, make sure the brushes that you're using to apply it are put straight into water. Um, don't leave it open on a table that's liable to uh, uh, spill over. Um, but as I say, I, I, I don't use it that often. I try and avoid it if I can. Um, the paints that I'm going to use are largely Winsor & Newton. Um, for the water, I'm going to use uh, basically cobalt blue uh, with a little touch of um, Alizane Crimson for the top area because I want that to look a little bit more uh, distant and grey. Um, pure cobalt in the centre and then cobalt with uh, a bit of uh, ultramarine blue uh, in it for the, the bottom area. As far as blues are concerned, ultramarine represents the warmest uh, blue you can get and cobalt is a sort of a middle um, uh, cold blue. But we want the area in the foreground, which is closer to the eye of the viewer, to be warmer and therefore we use um, uh, ultramarine marine with the cobalt um, in that area. Um, the other colours I'll use are um, Windsor orange, which is a nice um, transparent orange, um, Indian yellow, which I love using, it's a lovely deep uh, yellow, and a bit of cad red, um, and that's going to cover most of the body. And to darken the areas up below where the light's not um, showing, uh, being shown on the, the backs of the birds, I shall use a bit of violet in there as well. Um, the brushes I'm using are Kublinsky sable brushes. Um, these are by Da Vinci. They're brilliant brushes, hold a lot of water, uh, not cheap. And I'm going to use um, a four, six and eight uh, in size. Other brushes that I use, I won't use these now, uh, are Rosemary & Co uh, brushes. Lovely brushes, very well made. This is a series 401, which is a sable blend. Uh, lovely brush, springs back nicely. Um, so that's the brushes, the paper, uh, plenty of water, obviously. Um, palettes, I get asked about palettes quite a lot. Um, this one is a very cheap, it's only about 12 or 13 pounds, from Frank Herring and Sons in uh, Dorset, their compact uh, palette. And it's brilliant, lovely uh, mixing areas and holds uh, about, uh, yeah, holds 12 paints. Um, and I also use the um, this one, which is the Barry Honeman's Cloverleaf paint box. I use this a lot when I'm painting plain air. Great um, uh, uh, piece of equipment. Lovely mixing receptacles. You can put it into the uh, dishwasher as well to clean it up. Make sure you don't do that when uh, you've got uh, your pots and pans in at the same time. Okay, um, so I've got the masking fluid on. Thing to do now is to uh, get the background on. I'll then dry that up with a, with a, uh, a hair dryer. Uh, which will allow me then to take the, um, the masking fluid off. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the entire paper. Um, this is so that I don't end up with any hard edges or hard lines in the, the background. Um, and it also just buys me a bit of time um, especially if you're working in an environment which is centrally heated and is therefore quite warm. Um, unless you work very, very quickly with your washers, then you'll find you'll end up with all sorts of hard lines and so forth. Make sure that the water is evenly distributed over the top. Now, I'm going to mix up my first wash, which will be cobalt blue and a little bit of in crimson. And this turns the wash into a nice, faint, warm grey. A little bit too much. I was in crimson there, put a little bit more cobalt in. I want the background above the birds to be very light, but I want it to be dark enough so that when I take the masking fluid off, the tops of the birds show through as white against the background. So there goes my, my background. You see it's very, very faint in turn. I might add a little bit more to that in a second. And then I'm going to put on some pure cobalt across the middle of the painting. And I'm going to go for a slightly streaky effect. 
as it reaches the uh, the base. Nice long strokes. Bring that down. Leave a little bit of white here and there. Just a few more streaks, leaving light and dark areas. Now, as I'm putting more paint on to feed it, I am making sure that the paint I put on is drier than the paint that's already there or the background that's already there, otherwise I'll end up with a whole load of cauliflowers. Um, looking at the top there, I think that could do with just being a slightly darker tone. I'll just put that on. Yeah. And because I've wetted the paper already, I can do it without any great problems. That looks okay. Now, down at the, the base again, I'm going to use a bit of um, ultramarine blue. Good idea to make sure that your, your colours and your in the palette are clean <laughs> before you start. Um, so streak that in. There we go. A little bit behind there. I don't want constant streaks that all look the same. You want to vary them a little bit. I'm going to use a dry brush just to cut out some of the fuzziness. Just reduce the darker tone just slightly. That's okay. Looking all right. Good. Okay. I think uh, we'll leave it there. Don't keep on going at it all the time. Otherwise, as it dries, you'll end up with um, uh, kickbacks, mushrooms, whatever. Um, once you've got it looking relatively okay, leave it. It's only the background. It's not going to be um, the thing that catches the eye of the viewer when they first see the, the picture. So now I'm going to use the hairdryer on that and get it dry. Okay, so I've now dried off uh, the picture. Um, the next stage is to start painting the flamingos themselves. Um, and so we need to re remove the, uh, the masking fluid. Now, before you do that, Please take on board this piece of advice. Go and wash your hands carefully with soap and water. The reason for that is that on the paper I've got some graphite, which is obviously the, uh, uh, the 2B or 3B pencil that I've used. There's the uh, mask fluid itself, which is never, it never feels particularly dry. It's always tacky. And getting it off can... Um, end up with a whole load of rubbish and, and uh, smudges and everything else on your painting. So always work clean. So I've cleaned my hands, hopefully enough. Um, and so now I'm going to remove the masking fluid. And to do that, I don't try and take it off with my nail. I simply rub at it like this from one end. And there you are, you can see it start to, to come away. And I try to take it off in one sort of long roll if you like, starting from one end and working towards the other. Okay, you can see I'm having to rub quite hard, so that means that any dirt on my fingers that was there before, and of course even though you maybe can't see it, you'll have dirt on your fingers from the drawing, rubbing these out and all sorts of stuff. I've got to come down there a wee bit now. Um, it'll get pushed into the the surface of the paper. So the rule is, as with lots of different crafts and arts and so forth, work clean at all times. There we are, we're almost there now. It's the neck. I did use masking fluid on the beaks of these birds, there's no need to, of course anything that's darker than the background um, doesn't need masking fluid on. Um, fine, uh, it's if I can just find myself a pencil. Oh, there we go. Um, 
taking that off has meant that I've lost some of my lines a little bit, so I'll just reintroduce some of those. Don't need to go too far. That's okay. Good. That's looking all right. Fine. So now we start um, to paint the bows. Now, I have actually done this painting before, and I'll show you what I did. It is full of um, problems. There we go. Um, the main problem is that this bird, which is slightly behind this, the, this one here, is a bit too, um, t tonally a bit too intense. Um, this neck here of the bird that's in front is not standing out uh, far enough from the, the bird in the background. Um, and, I, and the reason that's happened is because I painted the bird in the background before I painted this one here. Uh, so I want to lighten that area there, get more contrast. Contrast here tone in the tone is very, very important and therefore bring that the contrast that one there down too. Um, also, I wasn't too happy with the colours and I lost a lot of the light on the backs of the, of the birds. So I want to rectify that uh, with this new painting, hopefully. Um, but I hope you can see that in this case, we've got a lot of white there. There's the white of the paper and there's the background. That background, when I put it on, looked extremely light. But you can see that uh, there is quite a good contrast there between, between the two, which allows me to retain the light on top of the birds, which is what I'm going to try and do. Okay, so I'll start off. And I'm going to work very much wet into wet. Um, I'll put a little bit, I don't want a, a, a hard edge to my white on the top, so I'll just put a little bit of water, just dampen that slightly. Uh, and then I'll go straight for the Indian yellow. This is a lovely colour, um, the Indian yellow, especially the, um, the Winsor Newton version of it. Um, I'm leaving a little bit of area on the around the edge there, um, where it would be light. As it touches the wet that I put on the top, it goes this lovely, lovely fuzzy. Finish, which is rather nice. Like that. Okay, um, and then I'll go and use my Lisa orange. Just drop that in. Lovely, lovely, bright uh, colours, these. A uh, delight to, to work with. But you'll have your own preferences as far as the makeup paint is concerned. Um, just ending up there with a slight hard edge to the back of the neck. I don't want that, so just introduce a bit of clear water to that. And again, around, around here, just giving a little bit of shape to that. Okay, um, I'm being rough and ready, there's no need to be very accurate. Um, go to my CAD Red, drop that in. We're getting all sorts of mushrooms and kitbacks and so forth, which is absolutely gorgeous. On the cheek there. And here, now I've probably got a little bit more red there than I really wanted, but I did want this bird to come well forward. I'll just move some of the Red there. Oh, 
Okay. Let that just dry for a second. The temperature in the room is quite uh, it's quite warm. Drop the red in with your IC, you just want to get rid of that. Okay, um, and now I'll use some violet. Mainly down below, where I want it to be shadowy and darker. The violet is mixing with the other colours and is just giving these nice sort of shadow areas. The top of the neck here, I'm leaving white because it's receiving most light. Um, so the shape of the neck there will be defined by the bird behind. And the way that the colours blend on this arches paper or arch paper is absolutely wonderful, really, really nice. And just feed it, just drop more and more of the colour in uh, as I wish. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do now too is just introduce a bit of the um, white gouache so I'm dropping that in wet that'll fade um, somewhat which is okay I can add more later on if I want to Good. Okay. Now I've got a hard edge. Top of the head, so I just want to put some water into that just to blend that out a little bit. That's fine. I will introduce more colour onto that bird uh, in a second, but I want to do it when it's more or less um, dry. Um, so now I'm going to work a little bit on the, the bird in the background. So again, I'm just going to... I could actually go right across the beak of this one here um, because it's darker and so... Uh, it wouldn't matter, but I'll go around it. Um, I've touched the neck there of this one here and I'm getting a little bit of, of uh, colour blending, you know, blending into the other bird um, and that's perfectly all right I love it I might do a little bit of uh, water spray in a minute to increase that effect and you get this lovely uh, fluffiness okay. so let's go in with the yellow I'm going to make this bird a little bit paler it's slightly in the background um, so I don't want it to be oops never mind there I don't want it to be quite so vibrant as, as the bird in front. As I mentioned before, I was a little bit too vibrant with it earlier on. Um, so that's as far as I'll go with the yellow. A little bit of Windsor orange. Working fairly quick. Need a fair amount of white, and then go in with the tad red, and you get this lovely, lovely, lovely blending going on because I'm working wet on wet. A little touch there. Don't want to go too much on this back bird. 
near the neck of the bird in the front because I did that before and it didn't work out very well. There we go, it's fine. Just pull him down a little bit. Good. Um, and now I'll use my my violet. All the time I'm looking for contrast between the the rear bird and the front bird, uh, making sure that one defines the, helps to define the other. Um, I don't want the same tone or the same colour um, from one bird to the other against each other, otherwise I lose the overall effect and the shape of the um, fine. Don't want to go too dark there. Just a little bit here. Um, I want to define there just the shape of the front bird, so I suppose a little bit of violet there just to give me a little bit more tonal contrast. Okay, there's a lot going on there, a lot that's not quite right, but it doesn't matter. Um, every one of, I, of these that I do comes out differently, just a little bit more red there perhaps. That's fine. Okay, we will rebalance that later on. Good. Um, but I think I've got the, the front bird now really looking as though it's ahead of the other bird, which is good. Um, next thing to do is um, I'm going to use a bit of uh, a really contrasting colour on, uh, on the birds now. This is a cobalt teal blue. It's a Daniel Smith colour, which I quite enjoy. Um, and I'm just going to put a few... Few flecks of that in. It's a very contrasting colour, but it's a complementary colour in some respects, um, and it really makes or gives um, or lends some vibrancy to the to the uh, object. A bit down there, perhaps. Um, I'll just use a little drop on the rear bird, not too much. That's fine. Okay. Okay, now um, we can look at the beak areas. So I'm going to use my Indian yellow again. You could use cad yellow here, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, and uh, just get a bit of a perfect picture I did before. Yeah, you can see what that goes with white on top of it the big area and this yellow patch just here. Maybe add just a little touch of um, orange underneath it just to give it a bit of three-dimensional shape. Um, the white area here is not quite entirely white, it's slightly grey, so uh, I'll use a bit of my cobalt and ultramarine. That's a good area. Okay. Um, and now I can do the beaks. Now, for black, I tend to use ultramarine blue mixed with burnt umber. You get a lovely range of greys and blacks with that. I'm going to um, cheat here just a little bit and go straight in with Payne's Grey. Only because I've got it on the palette. Into this one here. Now the back bird there is still slightly wet. I should have um, used a, a bit of uh, hair dryer on that, but um, so it's gone a little bit fuzzy. That's okay. That's all right. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Okay. 
Okay. Um, the neck area here has got a lot of hard areas, hard lines on it, and I want to get rid of that a little bit, so I'm just going to use a bit of fresh water, water just blend that around just a little drop. Um, just to bring his cheek forward a little bit, just a little bit of red there. Now the legs, um, they're dark. Um, I'm going to use um, some yellow on them to start off with and then a bit of um, violet so that they look three-dimensional. So I'm just printing the Indian yellow now down behind. Do the same for Um, and then I'll use a combination of violet, as I said, um, mixed with just a little touch of burnt umber. Nice shadow colour, this. It just. The, the violet can be too vibrant at times, and the burnt umber just helps to knock it back a little bit. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit. These incredible knobbly knees, these birds. Okay, the rear bird there. Just needs a bit more colour to him, I think. I wanted to keep him in the background, so I didn't want him to be too vibrant. But I think I've overdone that just slightly. I've also gone outside the line there on his neck, doesn't matter, and it's all right. Um, it's a very powerful cad red, that. So we're getting very close now to being finished. Um, at this stage, what I can do is do a little bit of water spray, just to let some areas go um, to go fuzzy. I think I might do that on the rear end of this bird in front. So I'm going to mask the front of the bird and just quick spray, yeah. and that will just blend and fuzz. It will come outside the line and everything else. It'll do crazy things. But um, it will make the bird look vibrant and alive. I hate um, paintings where the animals look as though they're being shot and then nailed to a perch. Um, by using the water spray, you get this general fluffiness, which makes them appear as though they're, um, they're actually um, alive. Um, I'm just going to use the violet now. just to help define so I'm using violet there to do that lovely colour What I always do now is just let it dry naturally um, and then go back to it and readjust it. It's fine, it's good. Okay, um, but to finish off, we need the reflections. Now, um, the original photograph showed the reflections from the sun, which is quite high overhead, which meant that the body of the bird was reflected. That's okay. But you've got to be careful there that you don't let the reflection take over the painting. 
So I'm going to have uh, the sun much lower down behind. In other words, reflecting the birds further down this way, which means that the only reflection I, I need to put in, essentially, are the reflections of the of the legs. So um, start over here, and all I'm going to do is make them very very simple. Um, I'm just going to sh move that around and just put a one or two squiggles like that. Stop, start, and the same with this one here. Right. This one's at an angle, so you have to put the reverse angle on. And that's it, more or less complete. Well, here is the, the finished painting uh, put into a mount. Um, after it dried, I tidied up one or two areas, intensified some of the colours, put a little bit more red in, um, made the beaks uh, a little bit darker, put a little bit more detail into the, the heads, but not too much. Uh, we don't need to get too fastidious about uh, eyes and, uh, and so forth. Um, you can see that the colours that I've used are not, I suppose, what you could call traditional flamingo colours, which tend to be pink, uh, maybe a bit of orange, um, which is there because the flamingo takes on the colour of what it eats which tends to be uh, shrimps, uh, but that doesn't matter. Um, I wanted to use vibrant colours, I wanted uh, to make them stand out, uh, and so uh, being absolutely true to life as far as the colour is concerned is not really uh, that important in my artwork. What I wanted was the shapes to be right, I wanted the gestures to be right, the way that they're standing to be right, and so forth, um, and to make the painting as simple and as quick as possible. Now. With the video, um, you know, it's taking me quite a time to get the uh, to get it together, but um, let me just show you if I can find it. Um, another one, which um, has slightly different uh, arrangement. Uh, and in total, including the drawing, that took me no more than about twenty twenty five minutes. Um, you can obviously take longer if you like. The other uh, thing I've done here too, you can see is you can see areas of white dots and this was uh, the masking fluid um, not just used on the, the bodies but splattered onto the painting as well so that when I put the background on and that was dry taking the masking fluid off leaves you with these little white areas and it just uh, not everybody wants to do that but it just adds a bit of sparkle a bit of life to the painting a bit of interest anyway um, I do hope that uh, you've enjoyed watching uh, me paint this, um, this scene um, and that it gives you some inspiration to uh, have a go yourself. There are loads of photographs that you can find uh, on the internet and so forth for uh, this sort of uh, subject. Uh, rearrange them, uh, get a nice arrangement um, and then just have fun. Thank you for watching.